Matt, last week we were talking about these these companies that we love so much: this War on Cash, Basket, Square, and PayPal, and Mastercard and Visa. And and you know, I, I said, hey, let's put out a poll and and see what people think about. It. Do we want to you know go ahead and introduce a weekly segment, a regular weekly segment, talking about these four companies, just catching people up on any newsworthy items? And Matt, eighty four percent. Of the voters in this poll, the people have spoken. 84% said yes, you need to introduce a regular weekly segment talking about the war on cash. I don't know, man. 84%, that's just, it was terrific turnout. I mean, somewhere close to 300 votes or something like that. So, you know, that's enough. I mean, it's, is that statistically significant? I don't know. But I mean, hey, it made me feel pretty good. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to introduce a regular weekly segment. On the war on cash, and we're going to talk about the the companies that make up the war on cash basket and any newsworthy items that uh, may have popped up. And there were a few. And really, let's go ahead and just let's hit the biggest item. I think that you and I both both will agree this is the biggest item. Uh, Square uh, is losing its its really its most public face to the company. I think uh, in in CFO Sarah Fryer. Granted, Jack Dorsey is the CEO, but Splitting time with Twitter, Sarah Fryer is the one we see out there all the time talking up Square's book, and she's done a great job at it. She is going to be taking off. She is actually going to accept a CEO position at a company called Nextdoor, which is a social networking company that focuses more on neighborhoods. So, while we are happy for Sarah and congratulations, certainly on the the CEO job. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and tell you this is a good thing for Square. I mean, she really has been just a tremendous leader for the company. But uh, what 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 do you think about this, Matt? I mean, I think she's been an absolute rock star for the company. But this, at the same time, the stock is down about thirty percent over the past couple of weeks. Is any one person does any one person make a company worth thirty percent less virtually overnight? No. <laughs> so. I'm not going to say this is a non-event like the like Jack Dorsey stock sale the other week or the um, the Square installments the re- the negative reaction to that those were both kind of non-events from a long-term perspective. This is an event, but for one, I have no reason to believe Jack Dorsey won't put the right person in the CFO role to replace her. And I mean, he's done a hiring has been one of his strengths in the past. I think we can agree. Yeah. So. Does, does losing her make the stock worth thirty percent less overnight? Absolutely not. Um, hopefully, one of these days I'll be able to shut up about it square for more than a day or two, <laughs> so I can add to my position. It hasn't happened in quite a while, um, so I, I view this as a buying opportunity. Um, like I said, I'm sad to see Sarah Fryer go. She's the one who really is pushing the monetization, the long term monetization of their banking services to consumers, uh, like Square Cash that we've been talking about. But at the same time, I think Square will be just fine over the long run, even without Sarah Fryer. Yeah, I tend to agree. You never want to see a company that uh, where everything hinges on one person. I mean, you want to probably avoid investing in those types of businesses. I don't think Square is that type of business. And uh, given given Jack Dorsey's role, I think you're right. He's made hiring a priority of his because he's not really the day to day. Uh, operations guy over at Square. I mean, he's he's really making sure uh, that that he's hiring people that can that can keep him abreast of what's going on and they can execute uh, not only execute the strategy but really help dictate strategy. And so I have every reason to believe that he uh, he and his team there will fill that role with someone who is very capable of keeping the company on the path that it's on. I mean, that's the nice thing is I think they're really on a great path right now. They've got a lot uh, of of strategy laid out there and what they want to do. Um, and, and so I don't think this is something where you're bringing someone in. To to change something, I think you're really bringing someone in there to kind of keep things going in the same direction they're going. So uh, who knows when they'll get somebody in there? I have to believe it's a pretty attractive job, um, but we will see. Uh, in PayPal news, there are a couple things that came up here with PayPal. One that I saw that I, it's just it's an interesting perspective for me from from the looking at the the population of folks out there who. Perhaps don't have a banking relationship is that PayPal will let customers deposit and withdraw cash now at Walmart stores. 
Now, that, of course, comes with a fee, and uh, it's not a cheap one either, $3. But, but I think, again, it's just something that PayPal is doing in order to be able to offer something for everyone out there who's looking uh, for a way to access their money one way or the other, whether they have a banking relationship or not. The other uh, item that came out that I thought was, was a little bit more newsworthy, and it's because it's in regard to Venmo, which is their popular uh, Money transferring app that that I think we see a lot of of younger folks using. I think it's a very popular with the millennial generation. Uh, Venmo they are going to start charging Venmo account holders when they make those instant money transfers on the platform. And I, I think it was interesting just from the point that when the news first came out uh, on on social media, uh, Twitter specifically, you saw people kind of jump the gun there and think, oh, this is insane. You know, Venmo now is just all right. We'll delete Venmo. I'm not going to use Venmo. Anymore, and they, I think they were a little bit unclear as to even what this really actually meant, because I think a lot of people out there thought this meant that Venmo was going to be charging uh, their account holders for just all money transfers. But to be very clear, this is for those instant transfers, right? Yeah, this is just for the instant transfers. But when I saw this news, my first reaction was maybe it's a little too soon, um, and just a lot of the reactions I was reading on Twitter said things to the effect that there are so many free ways for people to send money nowadays that maybe Venmo jumped the gun on trying to monetize its service and is doing it in the wrong way. Um, this is just the instant transfers, but that's what millennials want. Yeah. And millennials are very anti-fee. Um, I mean, I'm, I am i don't know if you, I don't think Jason's a millennial. I'm not. <laughs> no way. I, I think I missed the cutoff by about, I, I missed the cutoff by a few months, um, depending on who you ask. But the millennials want free and they want quick. And the most of the millennials I know that use Venmo use it because it's free and want their transfers done instantaneously. I think the fee was like a quarter for an instant transfer. It was, it was it, there was a fee, but it was very cheap. Um, so now if you're transferring, you know, $200, that's a $2 fee. That's not nothing. So my, like I said, my gut reaction was that it might be a little too soon. And that they should focus on growth instead of monetization at this point. Yeah, it's very possible. I mean, I think they they've noted more than once that they they aren't really making a lot of money from from them. It's not a part of the it's not a profitable part of the business thus far. But I, they they definitely see it as something that should be um, material to, to the PayPal model years years down the line. And and instant transfers are one way. Um, I mean, they they obviously have the, uh, the the Venmo Visa card, which is another way. And so it'll be interesting to see how they manage this. Um, I mean, it's worth noting too, though. I I mean, there is a risk that any financial institution takes on when they make the that that uh, transfer available immediately, right? And so, uh, ideally, uh, you'd like to see them be able to uh, use the data uh, to make those types of decisions and perhaps do it in a fee-friendly way. Um, but I guess time will tell here. We'll see how management sort of figures their way around that one. Uh, but but certainly something to keep in mind.